Working with matrices in, um, in code in Maya can be as simple as this. We can just use the commands X form to query the matrix from our sphere. So if we just move this guy around, we'll just modify it a bit. Uh, we can just take that matrix and use the commands X form to apply it to our torus. So if I just run this, we can now see that we've matched up both of these perfectly. So the, the transform values are matching perfectly. As we mentioned in the vector video as well, the issue with this is basically what it returns is just one long list of floats, specifically 16 floats, because we're using a 4x4 four four matrix, right? The issue with this is that because it's just a pure Python list of floats, we can't really do any of the matrix operations that we want to do. If we were to use, if we wanted to do any of those operations with this, we would have to go in and manually do all that calculation ourselves. You can imagine how bloated your code is going to be with that, and just like it's going to be a pain to deal with that. So, enter the M transformation. Sorry, the M matrix. The M matrix is a part of the uh, Open Maya module and basically what this is it's a, a representation of a matrix now this is a purely mathematical representation of a matrix it has no notion of um, translation rotation scale or shear it only thinks of the numbers in a matrix so to create one of these you can basically pass in four lists of four floats. So this would be row, the first row, the second row, third row, and the fourth row. And then we just put these into a list that encapsulate these as well, right? So we have first row, second row, third row, fourth row. Now, as soon as we then just pass this into our M matrix here, we can see here now that it spits out the four numbers, sorry, the, the 16 numbers that we basically passed in here. So each of these basically represents one row. So also if we do this, we'll see that it's an M matrix. Now, the good thing about this is that as soon as we have that, Sorry, I forgot as well. We can create an M matrix from a list of 16 floats as well. So we can also do this, and you can see this basically gives us exactly the same thing. If I just add this down here, you know, if I print these, I'll just clear this out, you can see it basically creates the exact same thing for us. So you can make it just from 16 floats as well, which is you know exactly what the X form returns. So that's really really handy for us as well. Now as soon as we have this basically now we can start to use um, the multiply with these matrices as well because if we do that we now have an actual multiplied matrix by these two. Now of course these numbers are a little bit bit silly and don't make too much sense for us right now but basically we took one matrix we multiply it by another matrix and and we got the multiplied result back. So straight off the bat, super straightforward to do that. And it's very, very simple and powerful. The good thing about this as well is every matrix that you have, you can call dot inverse on it. So you can get the inverse of that. So now we can do this. And now we have a matrix that is the inverse. <laughs> Again, these numbers don't make too much sense with what we're dealing here with like these weird kind of like one, two, three, four, five numbers, but it will work with um, your kind of normal versions as well here. So that's the, the kind of main overview that you need to know about like the M matrix. Now to really deal with this nicely in Maya with kind of transformations, we need to use the M transformation matrix. This basically contains all the ideas about translation, rotation, and scale, and shear that you can get out of a matrix.
Now, to create an M transformation matrix, you can either pass it in an M matrix or you can pass in an M transformation matrix. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just getting the the kind of the float matrix that we that we did here and I'm just passing that in just to show that yep, yeah, we're actually we've actually made this M transformation matrix object. But note here that if I try to print it or if I like just inspect it like this, you can see that it doesn't return, it doesn't show us the uh, the contents of that matrix just as we had with the other one. So it's a bit more involved to get the data out from this matrix because there's a lot more going on. But let's just look into this and let's now, this is one way that you can do this, right? You could use, for instance, your commands X form to query a matrix of, uh, of an object. So right here now, we've, um, I'm just gonna set this back to the origin for now. So right now, I'm querying the matrix from the sphere. I'm then passing that those float values into the M matrix to create that matrix there. And then to create the M transformation matrix from the values of this, I'm passing in that matrix here as well. So it's three couple of steps here, but it's pretty solid. So if we just do that, see, that works nicely. Now, one thing that will have to be mentioned when we're dealing with getting and setting translations and each of the components with matrices is that we have to start dealing with spaces a tiny bit. Now, because we're just dealing with an individual kind of matrix, it doesn't have like a parent, there, there's no idea of that, there's no idea of an object, there's literally just the matrix, uh, we're just going to use the transform space. So I'm just saving that in the variable space. Now, to be able to get out the information from a transform, transformation matrix, I will simply call the, the variable that we stored it in, and to get translation, we just say dot translation, and we need to pass in the space. And as soon as we do that, you can see here now, we get out that and those translation values that you can see here as well that it matches up with. Minus 2.2, 2.86, So that's how you can get out the translation. Now, for the rotation, we end up with the same issue that we had with the vectors. If we just get if we say x format dot rotation, what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up getting an M Euler rotation out, right? And that's not really going to help us too much unless we convert it. So what you can do is on an M Euler rotation, you can basically return it as an M vector. So we just get those exact same values, but we just get it out as a vector. And as we as soon as we have that, we can then basically just easily loop over each X, Y, and Z component and convert them. So I'm just doing that in this list comprehension here. And if you're not familiar with list comprehension, what uh, this is doing is basically the same thing as if I had this for loop and I ran this. And it's with this list comprehension, I'm kind of capturing this in the, the kind of brackets here as well, so it spits it out into a list, All right? So as soon as we do that, I'll just do that here now. And then for the this is the scale and the shear, it's exactly the same as translation. We just put those in and we make sure that we give it the scale, sorry, the space. And let's just check all of them here now. So you can see the rotation is exactly as we see it here. The scale also matches up and the shear, let's double check here, is giving us, oh wait, wait, double check this, yeah, yeah I think I, I must have missed something there from a previous thing, but you can now see that the scale and the shear is all matching up here. So that's how you would go about getting the components of 
or basically the values of a transformation matrix. Now, if you want to go about setting these, you would basically be doing the same kind of an idea as before, like translation, rotation, scale, or shear, but just with set in front of it. Again, we have to provide it a space that we want to do this in. And what we have to pass in, instead of just passing it in simple values, as with the translation, it was returning m vector. So now we have to pass in an m vector as well. So basically, if we want to modify this to basically be set the translation to 111, I'm just going to pass in an m vector of 111. So I'll do that here as well for these guys. So for the rotations, again, it's the same as when we're getting it back out. To set it, we have to make sure that we set with an M Euler rotation and that M Euler rotation needs radians. So I will create a new M vector here where I'm basically specifying the rotation values. So here I'm just giving it like rotation one in each of the axes and I make sure that I, I pass those into math.radians. And for scale and shear, really straightforward and simple. They're the same ones. So if I do that now, and I'll just update. So if I run this now to get out all those, you can now see that we changed the translation, the rotation, the scale, and the shear to exactly those values that we set here. Now, if you want to add to the components, let's say that instead of setting like a specific value you want to add to them, you can use the translate by, rotate by, scale by, and shear by options. So you can see here with the translate, again, give it in an M vector and a space, do that. With the, ra with the um, rotation, we have to do our M Euler rotation again. We'll pass that in and for all of these. So let's just see what we're actually getting back here now. Cool, so we added 111 to the translation, so that ends up at 222, that makes sense. And here, this looks a bit weird. We added 111 to the rotation as well, but we're getting back these weird, weird numbers here. Well, what's actually happened is what we had is we had the transform rotated at one. And what we did was we basically rotated it. Think of it almost as if we had a group above it that we then rotated one, one, one. So if we take this out, then those are the values that we ended up with. So we're, we're not rotating it like perfectly locally to its rotation axis, but we're rotating it in world kind of. So just something to be aware of there. Now also note that for um, the scale that we, we actually said scale by one, 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 and the scale is still showing one. Now, why is that? Well, it's because we basically had a scale of one and then we scaled by one, which basically leaves us with the scale of one, right? So if we instead scale by two, let's say 0.5, you know, if we do that, and if we now look at all of this, you can now see that the scale has changed here. And if I go and I scale again, you can now see that it's scaled accordingly. So that's something to just keep in mind as well, that when you're doing scale by, you're not um, adding to it, but you're you're um, kind of scaling the whole thing. So think of all of these things as any kind of like um, a group above it that you're adding to the original one. And it's the same with, uh, with shear as well. And um, shear basically is you can think of that as like a, a scale value of it almost. Now, that's all and good if we can just go through and like set all of these things, but how can we actually, you know, use that like sensibly or like nicely without having to go in and get all of these and then set them? Well, the nice thing is that 
the transformation matrix basically has a function that is called dot as matrix. Now, if we call that, it's going to return a, an M matrix to us. And the good thing about this is that the M matrix, right? We can create we can create that from a list of sixteen floats, just as we said with um, with the original. Uh, how we created it, how we could get it from XForm, and how we can set it. The really good thing here is we can actually take this whole um, transform, this matrix, and pass it directly into commands XForm. So we can just call it XForm.mat as matrix. And if we do that on the sphere, we've now actually set exactly those values that we had up here. Right, so you can see now two, 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 uh, two, right, all those rotation values and the scale, and we've also set all that shear. So if we want to take that back to, let's say that we just want to take it perfectly back to, you want to remove the shear, take it back to the original of zero, and we just want to, yeah, we can have the rotation and the translation, but if we do that, we can go back and you can now see that we set the scale to one, we set the shear to zero, we set the rotation back to one, 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 and we set the translate to one, one, one. So that's one kind of easy, like <laughs> sort of easy, but it's it's one nice way that you can deal with a lot of the power that the um, that the trend, like sorry, that the a Python API gives you but without delving too deep into it and getting kind of stuck down into that. By using commands xform, that allows you to kind of quickly get an xform that you, sorry, that get a matrix and also set a matrix. So if you just pass it through a matrix into transformation matrix and back in, honestly, for most of the time, you'll probably just end up needing the M matrix and doing your multiplications there, and then you can just set it directly. But if you need to do anything really fancy, you can push it into the transformation matrix. Okay, cool. Well, I hope that was so, sort of enlightening, but we'll see. Do ask me any questions.